Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, both free sites. Let's revisit, and these will be my final comments on this fight in a full video. Let's revisit the rematch of Canelo, who's now the middleweight champ, right, in multiple sanctioning bodies, versus Triple G. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, you see it in every barber shop, right? The old guy who in my day wanted to talk about Bill Russell, Ray Robinson, Elgin Baylor, people from an earlier generation, and wanted to make the argument that their sports needed to get it right. That their sports needed to do things to preserve the sports integrity, the sports credibility. Right now, let me just say, they have another commercial where they joke about people becoming their parents, right? Amazingly enough, years later, I seem to be in that position, right? Surprises me, but in a lot of ways, I'm like the old guy at Jerry's Barber Shop in Queens Village years ago. Let me just say this, though. Right? As the old guy. <clears throat> Boxing has to be about fighting. Not celebrity or future box office. Now, this rematch fight was a great fight. It was action-packed. If you came to see a lot of action, if you came to see two guys throw at each other, neither guy running and hiding, punches landed, punches attempted, and this fight had it all, right? Let me go one step further. I know there's some people who I have a lot of respect for, a lot of respect, George Foreman former heavyweight champ, a guy whose boxing insights I try to track. A guy who, when he was a young man, used to spar with Sonny Liston, right? George Foreman scored the fight for Saul Alvarez. He had Alvarez winning the fight seven rounds to five rounds. Okay, I understand that many of you Many of you scored the fight for Saul Alvarez. I'm guessing at least 30% of the public scored the fight for Saul Alvarez. Right? But let me just say this. While Canelo surprised a lot of people, let me raise my hand here, he surprised me with his style, right, for the rematch, which was different than the first fight. In the rematch, he's in the pocket, right? Very different. Let me say this, too. I have to tip my hat right here to Canelo's trainer, Eddie Reynoso, who did a spectacular job, simply spectacular, reworking his fighter's game plan. Right? Canelo comes in with a different plan than the first fight. And it's breathtaking when you look at Golovkin's knockout percentage. Canelo decided he was going to stay in the pocket. Now, great. But let me just say, boxing can't have fights scored like this. It just can't. This fight is a textbook textbook example of folks getting caught up in the moment, caught up in the celebrity. And I believe, quite frankly, that this is a location fight. In other words, Canelo wins this fight in Las Vegas. Other than Los Angeles, I'm not sure if there's another major city in the United States 
in which this exact fight would have been scored this way. The judges were top notch. But I believe Canelo's celebrity seems to have just whitewashed what actually took place in the ring. Right? In my opinion, I have no doubt that if this fight were in Kazakhstan, where Golovkin is from, Golovkin wins this fight, the same fight, by four or five rounds. If this fight is in Chicago, New York, Philly, and I'm sure I'll hear from people from New York, Chicago, and Philly in the comment section who will challenge what I'm saying here, but I believe Golovkin wins the fight by three or four rounds. Right? What I'm going to do here, and just understand, Golovkin goes into the fight a historical figure. Right? He's hunting down Bernard Hopkins's record of middleweight defenses. He's unbeaten. He's actually hunting down Floyd Mayweather's boxing record in terms of a career that's unbeaten, right, for the number of fights. I know there's a draw. I believe even the draw is questionable, right, highly questionable. Right, so Golovkin, you know, is really in the conversation going into this fight with the great middleweights in history, right? Stanley Ketchell, if you want to include him, I feel he legitimately knocked down heavyweight champion Jack Johnson, right? Carlos Monzon, Marvin Hagler, Bernard Hopkins, right? Here you have Golovkin, and he has several belts. He's a champion. Now, given that reality, given that reality, in a fight with no knockdowns. In a fight where Golovkin lands, forget throws, lands close to twice the middleweight average number of jabs in a round. In other words, folks, the jab, if you look at the jab, if you just look at the jab during the fight, Golovkin wins the fight with a cushion, right? In other words, the jabs aren't close. So what I want to do here is to just point out, because I know many of you disagree with me, right? But understand, I'm talking for folks like Terrence Crawford, arguably boxing's best pound-for-pound -pound fighter who was on Twitter before the decision was announced, saying that he had Triple G for the win. Right? I'm telling you Canelo supporters here, people who believe Canelo won the fight. I privately believe there's at least, at least, the same number of people who believe that Golovkin won the fight. In fact, I'll even go further. Right, the people who believe Golovkin won the fight, they believe Golovkin won the first fight. Right? Understand you have a British newspaper where the score had Golovkin winning by four rounds in the first fight and by four rounds in the second fight. Right? Has there ever been a situation in boxing where the perceptions are this divergent? where a guy gets his unbeaten streak broken and where many people believe in two fights that he wins by multiple rounds where he should be 2 and 0 oh, he's instead 0 oh, 1 and 1 so let's go to the copy box numbers just to understand that they fight for 12 rounds in the rematch and there is not a round, 
not a round where Canelo throws more punches than Golovkin. In fact, the gaps are noticeable, right? Let me say this too. In terms of punches landed, Canelo does land more punches than Golovkin in some of the rounds, right? But understand in those rounds, the punch totals are close. So let's talk about it. First round. Canelo throws 36 punches, Golovkin 47. Second round, Canelo throws 48 punches, Golovkin 64. Third round, Canelo 41, Golovkin 65. Fourth round, Canelo 56, Golovkin 87. Excuse me, Canelo 58, Golovkin 87. Even with the 58, 29 punches thrown gap. Fifth round, 43 to 67. Sixth round, 56 to 68. Seventh round, 63 to 72. Eighth round, 51 to 82. Ninth round, 61 to 80. Tenth round, 56 to 83. Eleventh round, 45 to 75. Twelfth round, 64 to 89. Right now, let me just say this. In my opinion, jabs still count in boxing. Maybe I've missed the memo where we aren't supposed to count jabs. I don't believe it's an argument to say, okay, well, Golovkin's throwing jabs though. Right? So Canelo should be winning the rounds where Golovkin is throwing and landing his jab. I don't see how that works. Let me also say this too. Canelo doesn't have enough volume for me to then say, well, Canelo landed the more meaningful punches, which in my opinion, he didn't, but he doesn't throw enough volume for me to say Canelo's power shots offset the jabs. Understand too, on the power shots landed, right? Canelo lands more power shots than Golovkin, 143 to 116. Let me repeat that. Canelo lands more power shots than Golovkin, 143 to 116. But understand, Golovkin landing 116 power shots is closer to Canelo's number of power shots then the jabs landed by the two guys. Canelo only lands 59 jabs in the fight. Golovkin lands 118 jabs. 118 jabs. Let me also say, too, that the quality of Golovkin's power shots was top-notch. In other words, as you watch the fight, you realize that Golovkin's landing more headshots than Canelo. Jab and power. Canelo lands more body shots than does Golovkin, but not by much. Now, Golovkin, let me backtrack on that last statement. The difference in power shots is Canelo's body work. But Canelo only lands 46 body shots over 12 rounds, right? 46. Golovkin, who's a Klitschko-type headhunter, only lands six, which is only, I believe, something like two less than he lands the first fight. In other words, Golovkin, by design, is going up top. Put a different way, Golovkin lands 110 power shots to Canelo's head, right? 110. Canelo, by contrast, lands 143 minus 46, 
According to my math, that's 97 headshots, right? 97 headshots. So, in a fight where Golovkin is the champ, right? He's the champ. In boxing, very long tradition, where the opponent has to take the champ's title. I don't believe these numbers suggest that Canelo did. I'll even go further. I don't believe these numbers suggest that Canelo even won the fight. Let's talk about the rounds. Then I have to be hustled off here. I have a kid I need to take to daycare. Uh, in terms of the rounds where Canelo lands more punches than Golovkin, 12th round, Canelo lands 21 shots. That's a key round, by the way. Right, that's a key round, because if Golovkin wins the 12th round and all three judges' scorecards, Canelo doesn't win the fight. Canelo, 21 punches landed, Golovkin, 20. In the 11th round, Canelo, 18 punches landed, Golovkin, 18. Right? You go back to the 7th round. Right? All the other rounds... Golovkin either lands more punches or is tied with Canelo in some of the rounds, right? Um, ninth round. Canelo lands 17. Golovkin lands 18. Seventh round. Canelo lands 23. Golovkin 21. Sixth round. Golovkin lands 23. Excuse me. Canelo lands 23. Golovkin lands 16. Right? Those are the rounds that are razor close. Right? Those are the rounds. All the other rounds have gaps on them. Second round, Golovkin, 19, Canelo, 12. Third round, Golovkin, 16, Canelo, 12. Fourth round, Golovkin, 23, Canelo, 14. Right? So, yes, I believe if this fight took place in London, Golovkin wins by three or four rounds. If this fight takes place in most places in the world with boxing cultures, Golovkin successfully defends his title. But in Las Vegas, and I'll also concede, in Los Angeles, where Canelo might as well run for mayor, right? Canelo's celebrity... And the fact that, as Will Chamberlain famously said, no one roots for Goliath. And Golovkin went into this fight the betting favorite after supposedly a draw in the first fight. Right? I believe people looked at the underdog staying in the pocket, looked at the celebrity, looked at Canelo's future box office potential, given that he's younger than Golovkin. And I believe that shaded their judgment. Right? So I make no apologies here for saying I feel that Golovkin won the fight by a few rounds. Right? Carl Frampton used some other language in discussing his views on Twitter about the judges' scorecards. I have the utmost respect for George Foreman. He's one of my favorite people in boxing. Right? I don't know him personally, but he's someone I track. Right? I thought he was one of the hardest hitters I've ever seen in my life. Courageous man. Like many, I feel that the referee takes his title in the Rumble in the Jungle because the ref counts to nine, not ten. One man's opinion, you look at the film, you tell me. Right? And Foreman gets up, by the way. But I just think he's wrong on this fight. I think in many ways this fight is like Tommy Morrison against George Foreman. Where an argument can be made, Foreman wins the fight, but then loses the title because he's the older fighter and Morrison has a lot of celebrity and is viewed at the time as having a brighter future, right? Let me just say, too, perhaps it's poetic justice. If you look at Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler, the Hagler crowd, and they're sizable, will say, if you count the body punches, Marvin wins the fight. In this fight, Canelo has a bigger problem. 
The jab is front and center. Once you notice the jab, there's no way Canelo wins the fight because the jab is there round after round and Canelo, who's trying to stay in the pocket, has no solutions defensively on what to do with it. You can't have a champ enter the ring. Have a jab that lands dozens more times than his opponents. Right? Has a jab that is an issue. Lands more than a hundred power shots to his opponent's head. And somehow is deemed to have lost his title. Years from now, people are going to look back at these copy box numbers in this film. And the fight is not going to add up to them. But in the moment, in the moment, many people believe Canelo won this fight. That's how I see it. Let me go to daycare here. Thanks for stopping by. Let me hear your comments, right? Especially if you disagree with me in terms of this being a location fight and you believe that if this fight were in New York, Philly, Chicago, that the outcome would have been the same. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.